I want to help improve the quality of life here in DeKalb County. My father was a police officer. I love the teamwork. Secure communities make successful futures possible. Every day is an opportunity to help someone. It's an ability for me to give back. I wanted to serve my community. I want to be a role model for future generations. Para que la comunidad se sienta segura. The Cap County, where I belong. I come from a family of first responders. I wanted to have a positive impact on kids that grew up the same way that I did. Because my basketball coach and my mentors were police officers and they inspired me. To be the change I want to see. Because my grandfather served. Because I'm passionate about my job. There are people who look like me and don't have a voice. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We all know that 2020 was a challenging year. However, we at the DeKalb County Police Department took on those challenges. And while not easy, we have made some strides. When you think of the police department, you automatically think of our Uniform Patrol Division. And while they are our front line, there are many moving parts that contribute to our success. And today you will hear from most of them. We'll start with the Uniform Patrol Division and move on to the remaining two divisions, after which we will have a brief Q&A. So please submit your questions in the comments below, and I'll be back in a few minutes. So sit back and be prepared to learn all things DKPD. Right now, we're going to start with Assistant Chief Patrick. Good evening. I'm Major Patrick Sherling, your North Central Precinct Commander. The North Central Precinct covers approximately 45 square miles northwest portion of the county. The precinct borders the city of Atlanta, Avondale, Shambly, Dorville, Tucker, and Decatur. We have 91 sworn personnel and seven civilian professional staff. During 2020, the North Central Precinct faced the challenges of combating criminal activity and protests. We overcame these challenges and provide exceptional services to the citizens we serve. We identified problematic areas stressed by crime and through strategic enforcement plans. This resulted in 11% reduction of violent crime, 20% reduction of property crimes. Together, officers and supervisors in the North Central Precinct, we dug deep in 2020. We renewed our esprit de corps, making us a stronger and committed team. Moving toward a better 2021, the North Central Precinct will continue to partner with you, the community, through a shared responsibility and combat crime. We will expand our community and business outreach, and internally, we're going to build supervisors and leaders within our ranks. Thank you for your support. We look forward to a prosperous 2021. Greetings, I'm Major Ken Banks, commander of the Cab County Police Department, South Precinct. South Precinct covers 54 square miles of territory located in the southwest corner of DeKalb County, Georgia. South Precinct has 137 sworn police officers and six professional civilian staff members. We provide service to over 120,000 citizens of whom we strive to protect and serve every day. We respond to calls for service, we are proactive in our efforts in deterring crime, and we embrace the philosophy of community-oriented policing and problem solving. We have continued to interact with the public through our community policing unit, our Majors Night Out, faith-based organizations, food and clothing giveaways, and DeKalb County sponsored events. Our precinct resources consist of uniform patrol, detectives, neighborhood enforcement team, and the community policing unit. In reflection of year 2020, we experienced the unfortunate but necessary change in how we engage with you, the citizens of DeKalb County we quickly noticed the need to divert from the established norm of police and public engagement, and thus we embraced virtual meeting platforms such as this. Year 2020 also brought out the entrepreneurship of our youth with water sellers. While most can appreciate their desire to earn money, it is an unlawful act, but more importantly, this activity carries inherent dangers such as pedestrian robberies and other violent crimes. As we embrace the new year, South Precinct is excited about reestablishing old traditions and creating new endeavors. We look forward to reengaging our citizens with our face-to-face -face community meetings and other events, such as our Majors Night Out. 
we will continue to work collaboratively with our business and residential communities to determine how together we can make South Precinct better. Greeting great citizens of DeKalb County. I am Captain R.C. Hughes, commander of the East Precinct. Our precinct covers approximately 79 square miles of the southeast portion of the county and encompasses the cities of Stonecrest and Lithonia. There are 122 sworn officers and five civilians assigned to serve you here at the East Precinct. Here's a snapshot of some of the events that took place in 2020. East Precinct, along with the rest of the nation, faced unprecedented challenges in 2020. However, we were able to pivot and meet these challenges head on by connecting with our community via virtual meeting platforms. We also pulled together as a team and reallocated our manpower to fill in any gaps that we may have experienced because of the pandemic. In addition, we were able to create new and refortify relationships with local clergy members, community leaders, and community members as well. However, let me tell you some of the good things that have taken place at East Precinct. Even during the pandemic, we made great noteworthy strides. We were able to experience an increase in manpower, a 3% decrease in crimes against persons, a 15% decrease in property crimes, and our criminal investigation division had a higher than average closure rate. Going forward in 2021, our primary goals are simple. We're going to continue to increase our community engagement, build new community partnerships, reinforce our efforts to decrease our crime numbers, and increase training opportunities for our training uh, for our staff and our officers. We're on a mission to keep East Precinct great by developing and supporting officers and working alongside community members to build stronger networks and encourage feedback and solicit solutions from the community. Together, everyone achieves more. The team concept, that's what we're about at East Precinct. Greetings, I'm Craig Medlin, the major over at DeKalb County Police Department's Tucker Precinct. The Tucker Precinct covers approximately 60 square miles of the northeast portion of DeKalb County and contains the cities of Tucker, Stone Mountain, Clarkston, and Pine Lake. This precinct has 114 sworn employees and five civilian professional staff. Our employees have stepped up and worked diligently through the last year, adapting the task outside of their usual work to ensure that the citizens are protected. This year, we were able to add to our crime fighting technology with Connect to Cab, increasing the number of flock cameras for placement in our high crime areas. We have also added two new portable speed cameras to place in frequent areas of concern that alert drivers to slow down and watch their speed. This year, we had a decrease in property crime in 2020 of 11%. We've also had a decrease in crimes against person of 19%. So moving into 2020, our challenges were the pandemic, along with protests and threat of property damage, and looting, it taxed our resources. The heightened alert over an extended period of time made it challenging for our officers to keep up the physical and mental well-being. We continue to work to make sure of our employees' wellness in dealing with all of last year's events. Fortunately, we have in place peer support, employee assistance program, and clergy to assist them. Going forward in 2020-21, we will continue our community collaboration expanding our community policing unit at Tucker Precinct that will focus on positive interactions with our communities and businesses. We will expand our use of technologies such as the flock camera system, ring camera system, to assist in our efforts to solve and reduce crime in our communities. Lastly, we are continuing employee development with leadership training for all our supervisors. Good evening, I'm Lieutenant Anthony Wills. I'm the commander of the community policing unit. The community policing unit was created to bridge the gap between the DeKalb County Police Department, our neighbors, communities, businesses, schools, faith-based organizations, and our youth. We identify and address the concerns of each of these groups, and we are actively building positive police presence through our interactions, visibility, and accessibility. We are passionate about our community. We are passionate about serving. We are passionate about the department. And we are passionate about bringing together these long lasting and trusting relationships so we can move forward and address the quality of life issues. In 2020, the community policing unit developed strong partnerships and collaboration with several of our community partners. During the holiday season, the community policing unit also provided resources and sponsored several families in need. The community policing unit also has partnered with other county resources around the county to address the homeless populations throughout our territories. Going forward in 2021, the community policing unit will continue to seek additional community and business partnerships. We seek to become visible in our communities, 
and we seek to be accessible always to our community members and partners. We will continue to work closely with our schools, families, and youth, and interact positively during, through mentorships and partnerships. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Rilling with the Cal County Police Department's Mobile Crisis Unit. The Mobile Crisis Unit is a cooperative arrangement between the Cal County Police Department and the DeKalb Community Service Board. The purpose of the Mobile Crisis Unit is to intervene and evaluate individuals who are experiencing a crisis and to assist officers who are responding to mental crisis situations. DeKalb County is the only agency in Metro Atlanta to be fortunate enough to have a registered nurse to ride with an officer and perform on-site mental health evaluations. In 2020, the Mobile Crisis Unit responded to and provided services for over 2,500 citizens, in which 732 were provided emergency mental health treatment. One of the challenges for the year was answering the calls of service and home visits with limited staff. In 2021, we seek to acquire additional nurses and double the personnel in the unit. Our goal is to increase the amount of on-site mental health evaluations performed. If you or someone you care about has experienced a mental health crisis, please consider the following options. If the situation is a life-threatening emergency, call 911 immediately. You can call the DeKalb County Crisis Center helpline at 404-294-0499, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Or you can visit the DeKalb Regional Crisis Center located at 451 Way, Decatur, Georgia, 30030. Good evening. I hope you enjoyed hearing from the precinct commanders as well as the community policing unit commander and the mobile crisis unit commanders. I'm Assistant Chief Greg Pedry, the Uniform Division Commander for the DeKalb County Police Department. The DeKalb County Police Department's Uniform Division is comprised of four precincts, North Central, Tucker, South, and East, who you've just heard from. With a combined strength of 468 sworn officers and 23 professional support staff, each precinct has been strategically placed within their respective precinct boundaries to provide the most efficient delivery of services to the citizens and visitors of DeKalb County. As time has passed with the creation of new cities, the precinct boundaries have shifted to accommodate gains or losses in territory. Personnel and other resources are allocated to each precinct based on calls for service and other service needs. Each precinct contains an investigative unit, a public education specialist, and administrative staff, to ensure the smooth operation of the precinct. The Uniform Division's primary responsibilities are to respond to calls for service, conduct preliminary investigations into criminal incidents, and serve the public through proactive patrol and enforcement. Each precinct supports the needs of their community and works to resolve problems as expeditiously as possible through enforcement, communication, and collaboration with those who live and work in these areas. The division and precinct's goals are to support the mission, goals, and objectives of the police department. We hope to provide the most efficient police service model to all citizens who reside in the county and work to collaborate with communities to ensure a reduction in crime. In 2020, the officers of the Uniform Division answered over 350,000 dispatched calls and handled over 230,000 self-initiated calls. They made over 2,000 felony arrests, over 4,000 misdemeanor arrests, and wrote over 42,000 citations. The department, including the Uniform Division in each of its precincts, implemented multiple programs to address the challenges facing the division and the citizens of DeKalb County. The COVID-19 pandemic caused an already safety-first-driven group of men and women to level up their safety standards due to dangers associated with this virus. We also experienced an unfortunate but necessary change in how we engage with you, the citizens of DeKalb County. We quickly noticed the need to divert from the established norm of police and public engagement, and thus we embraced virtual meetings such as this. We've used these platforms for residential and burglary meetings, uh, business meetings, clergy meetings, and staff meetings. We created the community policing unit and the bike patrol unit. Major's Night Out was created to strengthen community relations between the precinct commanders and the community. Uniform Division detectives are working the road to create more visibility and an opportunity to connect with more citizens throughout the community. The Mobile Crisis Unit was expanded in partnership with the DeKalb Community Service Board in order to provide additional Mobile Crisis Unit coverage. All of these enhancements coupled with the hard work performed every day by the men and women of the Uniform Division should create a recipe for success in the year 2021. Thank you, and now I, uh, you will hear from Major Mears of our Criminal Investigations Division. Good evening, my name is Major Alex Mears and I'm with the Criminal Investigation Division for the DeKalb County Police Department, commonly known as the Detective Division. And on behalf of Assistant Chief Antonio Catlin, who unfortunately couldn't be with us tonight, I wanna to thank you for tuning in. The DeKalb Division 
Detective Division is comprised of three sections, the major crimes, special victims, and special investigations. There are 120 people working in this division, 94 sworn and 25 civilians, all with the same goal of solving as many crimes as we can. In 2020, the men and women of this division cleared cases well above the national average. We cleared homicides 18% higher, sexual assaults were cleared 16% higher, and domestic violence cases were cleared 43% higher than the national average. We were able to do this by setting up each section to specialize in certain crimes. The major crime section area of focus is on homicides, assaults, and kidnappings. The special victims area of expertise is sexually based crimes, crimes against children, and missing persons. And our third section is the special investigations. They cover a wide range of crimes from narcotics, gangs, auto theft, and even corruption investigations. And in 2020, the criminal investigation was responsible for the arrest of 1,172 people, and we served over 208 search warrants without incident. We also started a new internship program that is going to benefit the entire department. It helps us by identifying the best officers to become a detective, and it gives officers an opportunity to see what detective work is really like. And it benefits the community by having a more well-rounded officer. Last year, we strived hard to engage our community, keep you informed of what we are doing, and seek your input when possible to help solve crimes. I'd like to stress that we not only work to solve crimes, but we work with our community and businesses to try and prevent crimes from occurring. And in just a few seconds, you will hear some of our success stories directly from those men and women. We're excited about the future, what our future holds as we move forward in 2021. With new innovative equipment and technology, we believe we can be more effective in combating crime. Now let's meet the rest of the team and hear what, where we've been and where we're going. I'd like to introduce you to Captain Brian DeLoach. Here are some of the trends we saw in 2020. Number one reason behind most of the murder escalated disputes, meaning that people turned to guns or knives to set up instead of trying to find a more peaceful solution. In 2020, our investigations showed that half of the murders were committed by people in New York we're familiar with each other. Another area that brought challenges to the homicide unit in 2020 was an increase in road rage assaults. To make an impact and prevent these types of shootings, we partnered with our special operations division to make sure that we get more visibility enforcement on our highways and make sure everyone can get to their destination safely. I want to take a second and tell you about some of our success stories in 2020. Our crime scene unit acquired a brass track acquisition system. What does that mean for you? What it means is we can now take shell casings from our crime scene and put them in a computer that is linked throughout the country. So if, if one gun is used in a shooting in Texas, is now here. Now here, we'll be able to link those cases. We have improved our transparency and are getting out valuable information through our social media pages to keep you better informed and in return, you have been able to give us valuable tips that led us to solve some of the heinous crimes in the county, to which we say thank you. In closing, in 2021, we look forward to building on our successes from 2020. We hope that the new technology and social media presence continue to grow and aid us in serving you. The citizens of DeKalb County deserve nothing less. Thank you very much. Greetings. I'm Captain Lonzi Robertson. I'm the section commander for the Special Investigation Section of your DeKalb County Police Department. Throughout 2020, the Narcotics and Vice Units were able to handle the bulk of complaints of criminal activities within our neighborhoods and around our businesses. The Narcotics Unit was able to handle a multitude of drug complaints. Due to your tips and self-initiated investigations, they were able to seize large amounts of illegal drugs, weapons, and money from felons who were later arrested. The Vice Unit handles concerns like human trafficking, prostitution, and ensuring that our businesses are adhering to county ordinances. Often, you may have noise complaints or complaints of businesses operating after hours designated by the county government. Detectives hear your complaints and do everything they can to ensure violators are stopped. In 2020, the Vice Unit was also a part of a countywide hotel motel task force that was assigned to ensure that hotels in our community are safe for citizens and visitors alike. They work with other county entities to identify violations and speak with hotel owners about adhering to DeKalb County ordinances. In 2021, the narcotics and vice units will continue to work diligently to help people with the criminal problems within our communities. With your help, we are looking forward to working together for a safe and productive year. 
Thank you. My name is Lieutenant Eric Heimer. I'm the DeKalb County Police Gang Unit Commander. The gang unit's primary responsibility is to gather intelligence and information on gangs in DeKalb County. This includes locating and photographing gang graffiti, identifying and interviewing gang members and associates, and developing community relations in an effort to further intelligence gathering and investigated efforts. A major challenge of the gang unit has been stopping gang violence and removing as many illegal weapons as possible from the streets. In 2020, a large-scale interstate firearm trafficking operation was disrupted by DeKalb County between DeKalb County and New York City. This was accomplished through the combined efforts of law enforcement from federal, state, and local levels, all spearheaded by the DeKalb County Police Gang Unit. The gang unit took a total of 88 firearms off the street in 2020. The purpose of the gang unit is not just gang suppression. We also actively promote programs aimed at deterring youth involved in gang lifestyle through gang resistance education training, or the GREAT program. This program educates middle school students and faculty of the nature and danger of gangs, how to determine if a student is involved in gang activity, who to report gang activity to, how to secure the school against gang activity, and what role the school can play in helping the students and staff avoid gang involvement. A major goal of 2021 is to certify a third gang, a great gang officer, to expand the curriculum to include more school officials, parents, and community organizations. We seek to balance the odds that youth in DeKalb County will find an alternative to gangs. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Donahue. I'm the unit commander for the DeKalb County Police Intelligence Unit. Our unit is responsible for providing actionable intelligence to the detectives and officers of our department so they can do their jobs better. One of our primary goals is to identify threats to the safety of our citizens before they even happen. An example of this would be the street racing problem that has plagued the metro area this year. We worked with nearly every other metro agency to combat the illegal street racing issue. The groups conducting these illegal takeovers, where they do donuts and burnouts on our highways and in parking lots, will hit multiple jurisdictions in one evening. So interagency communication is vital. We work very hard to improve communication and coordination with other agencies to determine when and where these illegal takeovers would take place and combat them together. This intel sharing resulted in numerous arrests of street racers all over the metro area. We look forward to continuing our cooperation with local, state, and federal agencies in the upcoming year to make DeKalb County safer. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Ward, commander of the DeKalb County's Homeland Security Unit. One of the functions of our investigative unit is to serve as a liaison between other government agencies and the DeKalb County community. During the 2020 year, our unit conducted critical infrastructure assessments throughout the county and neighboring jurisdictions. We also provided active shooter presentations, which included faith-based organizations, our county government, and even our senior community. These presentations provided safety tips and best practices if ever faced with an active shooter incident. Due to the onset of COVID-19, our unit was tasked with assisting the Cab Emergency Management Agency, our federal, state, and local partners with acquiring and securing personal protective equipment for the DeKalb County community and its employees. These interactions helped us to build a sound working relationship with other agencies and the community we serve. In 2021, our unit will continue to work closely with our federal and state partners in an effort to share pertinent information to keep DeKalb safe. We will also continue to work with our community at large and provide safety awareness presentations. The Homeland Security Unit is prepared and ready to take on any challenges we may face in 2021. Hello, I'm Detective Benton with the DeKalb County Police Internet Crimes Against Children Unit. The ICAC unit is responsible for conducting investigations into the online exploitation of children as well as human trafficking. For five of the last 10 years, the ICAC unit has been recognized for rescuing more human trafficking victims than any other agency in the state of Georgia. And we've also received awards for other investigations that we've conducted. The ICAC unit also uses different law enforcement and digital forensics tools to conduct investigations where suspects entice children online and also into child porno pornography. We have made numerous arrests in these types of investigations and prevented multiple hands-on offenses against children through these investigations. And all of this is made possible through the teamwork with our, with our federal, state, and local partners, not the least of which is our DeKalb County Vice and Intelligence Unit. The ICAC unit works diligently to protect our children 
and reunite victims with their families. This year, the ICAC unit will continue to work to identify suspects and bring them to justice. Furthermore, we look forward to working with the community to provide training in how to identify victims of human trafficking and also how to protect our children against online exploitation. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, I'm Sergeant James with the DeKalb County Police Special Victims Unit. The Special Victims Unit is responsible for investigating allegations of sexual assault, domestic violence, elder abuse, and child abuse. Our team of dedicated and trained detectives work alongside many government and private organizations to help provide justice as well as healing for victims. The DARA program, which stands for DeKalb At Risk Adults, began our regularly scheduled multi-departmental meetings new in 2021. These meetings allow us to work collaboratively to ensure all available resources have been allocated to our most vulnerable victims. By combining a sensitive and compassionate spirit with a dedication and drive for justice, we are oftentimes able to assist our victims in finding the closure they need. While it is true, sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of a heartbreaking investigation. It is our dedication to you, the community, that keeps us going. Thank you and stay safe. Good evening, my name is Greg Ivanoff and I'm the Assistant Chief of the Special Services Division. There are two sections within the Special Services Division. The first section is the Department of Special Operations section, which consists of a total of 10 units that make up both our Specialized Traffic Enforcement Unit and the Department's highly trained tactical units and is staffed with a total of 65 swarm personnel and two civilian employees. The second section of this division is our support section, which is made up of 10 units that have critical components of our police department that help keep our police department's day-to-day -day operations running smoothly, and also some of the police department's more specialized community programs where we interact with the public in a more non-traditional means. The support section is staffed with 26 sworn personnel and 43 civilian employees. In a moment, you're gonna hear from Major Pop over the support division and some of the members of that section and their roles and responsibility. But first, I wanna cover some more of the special operations section in more depth. 2020 really straight changed the structure of what a typical year in our division looks like. The men and women in the special operations section really rose to the unique challenges of 2020. Collectively, they were responsible for making over 362 felony arrests and they handled over 37,000 calls for service. In addition, we were heavily involved in assisting with providing traffic and security at most of DeKalb County's COVID-19 testing sites. In total, we staffed a total of six long-term testing sites, which in some cases were open six days a week. Our role at the testing site was to provide traffic support and security at each of the locations. And moving into 2021, we'll continue to maintain our role at the two remaining DeKalb County super testing sites that still remain very active. DeKalb County, Michael, DeKalb County CEO Michael Thurman organized and implemented a number of countywide food distribution events to help the citizens of DeKalb County who are suffering from food insecurities get the assistance that they desperately need. And the Special Services Division assisted at each of these events, helping to provide traffic support and vehicle staging for thousands of citizens who took advantage of the assistance being offered. These events also offered our, our officers the opportunity to engage with the community in a very positive way and we received amazing feedback and support from the citizens while we interacted with them while we staffed the sites. Also in 2020, the Special Services Division played a huge role in providing security and escort for voter ballots to ensure the integrity of our nation's election process. There were several elections in which our officers were involved in maintaining integrity and order as the election process and ballot counting took place. And now I'd like to share some videos to introduce you to some of the Special Operations Section leaders and their officers so they can explain some of the remarkable work they've been able to accomplish during 2020. Good afternoon, I'm Officer White. I'm Officer Franklin. Officer Raskin. Officer Crenshaw. And we are the Strategic Traffic Enforcement Patrol Unit, otherwise known as STEP. And we specialize in traffic enforcement. We also conduct specialized traffic details. And we work as a team to conquer whatever task given to us. So please, drive safely and always Wear your seatbelt. I'm Sergeant Moore of the security unit, and these are our officers. I'm Officer Amos. I'm Officer Williams. I'm Officer Carabega. We provide a police presence at key county buildings to ensure the safety of visitors, employees, and the safe operation of county business. And if we look like seasoned veterans, that's because we are. 
and we use our experience to tackle situations big and small and to help others. I've been with the county for 18 years and I still enjoy the challenges of the job. I've been with DeKalb County Police for 26 years and I'm proud to wear this badge. And I've been with the county for 40 years and I still love coming to work every day. I've been with DeKalb Police for 44 years and I still love my job. We are the security unit. Stay safe in everything that you do. Hello, I'm Sergeant Beasy with the DeKalb Police Aerial Support Unit. During 2020, the Aerial Support Unit has one of our newest unit members complete his initial flight training and is currently working on commercial pilot standards, which will allow him to operate the county's helicopter. Last year, Aerial Support handled 1,341 calls, provided numerous surveillance and photo flights for active investigations, and provided direct assistance on 36 felony and two misdemeanor arrests. Our unit also assisted in the recovery of eight stolen motor vehicles for a total recovered value of $108,500. During 2020, the Aerial Support Unit received federal grant funding for the new high-definition tactical camera system, which was installed mid-year. The new camera made our search for wanted suspects much more effective during both day and nighttime operations. The camera system has reduced the amount of workload on the tactical flight officers, allowing them to focus more on the safety of the officers on the ground and suspect apprehension. The 2021 goals for the aerial support unit are to increase unit staffing and have the tactical flight officer transition fully into a pilot role. By adding an additional pilot to the unit, it will allow the unit to expand our coverage and provide more proactive patrols and quicker response times to critical incidents. The DeKalb County Bomb Squad currently has bomb technicians as well as explosive detection canines. Our primary mission is to respond to all incidents involving explosives, military ordnance, suspicious packages, improvised explosive devices, post-blast scenes, suspicious white powder, and bomb threats. We also respond to assist our SWAT team during their activations, providing assistance with our robotic platforms that help us bring volatile situations to a safe resolution. Our canines provide EOD sweeps for dignitaries, critical events, and infrastructure. During 2020, we responded to 31 bomb squad calls recovering 56 devices and responded to assist on 15 SWAT activations. We also conducted 105 EOD canine sweeps for various dignitaries, including the president, vice president, first ladies, and president and vice president elect. The DeKalb County Bomb Squad also conducted over 400 hours of specialized regional EOD training. In 2021, we hope to expand our unit training and take advantage of grant funded courses to increase our expertise and help make our unit even better equipped to deal with any challenges we may face. Hi, I'm Sergeant Jackson. The Cab Police Motor Unit uses its police motorcycles to enforce traffic laws, provide police escorts, and perform other special details that require specialized vehicles and training. 2020 was a challenging year. However, we we're able to find innovative ways to conduct our specialized training while keeping the citizens of the Cab County safe. In 2021, we had planned to increase our traffic enforcement and public education efforts by using traffic data to target areas throughout the cab that has shown a high number of traffic crashes. As a reminder, in 2018, Georgia passed a hands-free Georgia Act, making it illegal to operate motor vehicles while holding a cell phone or supporting it by any part of your body. The law was put into place for your protection and protection of other motorists on the roadway. Please help our road, keep our roadways safe by obeying the law. The Traffic Specialist Unit investigates hit-and-run collisions and accidents that result in serious injury or death. In 2020, we restructured our accident database and improved our statistical traffic data reports. One of our challenges for 2020 was an increase in vehicle-related fatalities due to factors such as speed and distracted driving. TSU detectives responded to 133 call-outs for crash investigation and 96 fatalities. In 2021, we are looking to enhance our technology toolbox by acquiring a drone to conduct aerial three-dimensional scene reconstruction for traffic investigations. In addition, we are going to continue to work with other units within the department to mitigate vehicle crashes through enforcement actions and public education. The DeKalb County Police K-9 unit consists of highly trained K-9 teams. These K-9s are trained in both apprehension and narcotics detection. In 2020, these dual-purpose K-9 teams were responsible for 233 K-9 deployments, 41 felony arrests, 1,381 calls for service, 30 apprehensions, and 24 weapons seized. In 2020, the unit was faced with the retirement of K-9 Django, K-9 Indy due to their injuries they sustained while tracking and apprehending armed suspects. 
During their years of service, they were responsible for numerous arrests, narcotic seizures, and weapon seizures. In an effort to fill the void left from their retirements, the department purchased two new canines. These canines and their handlers are currently in training. They are scheduled to complete the six-week training course in a few weeks. Upon their return, the canines will be ready to deploy in the field. The canine unit goals for 2021 are to add additional canine teams to ensure 24-hour coverage and maintain optimal service to the citizens of DeKalb County, as well as our state, local, and federal partners. The DeKalb County Police SWAT team is comprised of well-trained and tactically sound police officers. Our team's primary responsibility is to address quality of life issues, serve high-risk search warrants, de-escalate violent situations, and save lives. In 2020, the SWAT team served over 60 search warrants, including SWAT activations. We seized over 200 firearms. The pandemic presented our team with challenges on how we approached our training. We use innovative ways to overcome those challenges to provide our SWAT officers with the necessary training to keep them at high state of readiness. In 2021, we are changing from our current camouflage uniform to a uniform that will help make our officers more approachable when interacting with the public. We're also going to provide advanced training to our officers to help hone their skills and overall make the team more tactically sound and the communities we serve safer. Hello, my name is Officer Dunn. I'm one of the members of the DeKalb County Police Star and Heat Team. Our officers who focus on the fatal injury crash prevention. These officers address dangerous driving behavior through traffic enforcement activity on the roadways and public education events. In 2020, the STAR team was responsible for 68 DUI arrests, 41 felony arrests, 1,095 citations, and participated in public education speaking engagements as well as multi-jurisdictional enforcement activities. Those statistics also reflect our proactive enforcement efforts to include addressing the street racers that have been active throughout the county and the metro area. In 2021, STAR officers look to increase prevention efforts through education, increased patrols, and training. Our officers will also continue working with metro agencies and the governor's office of highway safety during our national prevention mobilizations, such as Click It or Ticket, Operation Zero Tolerance, drive sober or get pulled over. Our priority is to keep you safe on our roadways. So please drive safely and always ensure that you and your passenger wear your seatbelts. The DeKalb County Tactical Response Team is responsible for responding to protests and incidents of civil unrest. During 2020, the DeKalb County Tactical Response Team responded to several protests. During these responses, our training and professionalism allowed us to successfully restore peace and order without a single arrest. In 2020, we also took the significant steps of adding several new unit members to this part-time. We also provide our team with the state-of-the-art equipment and training in order to ensure our team is adequately prepared to respond to future protests that require our involvement. Moving into 2021, we are planning to conduct additional training with other metro area police agencies. This cross-training will increase our team's ability to respond and operate cohesively with other jurisdictions and helps when larger event responses become necessary. I want to share my appreciation and try for the professionalism and the dedication our officers have shown during the very unique and challenging year of policing. And now I'm going to introduce you to Major Pop and some of our officers from the support side of the Special Services Division so they can explain some of the incredible work they've accomplished during 2020. Major Pop of the Support Services Section of the Special Services Division. This section is staffed by sworn and non-sworn employees and encompasses most of the department's non-enforcement and administrative functions to include the Advanced Technology Unit, the Property Room, the Permit Unit, Auxiliary Services, Personnel, Police Records, Wellness Unit, Open Records, and the Police Athletic League. While these units all have different functions, their overall goal is to ensure that the DeKalb County Police Department operates as efficiently as possible. During 2020, many of our units had to adjust their normal operations to allow many of our civilian employees to work from home or on rotating schedules. Throughout the year, our personnel adapted to the ever-changing environment and handled any additional tasks they were given while still maintaining the level of service to the department and public that we expect. Going into 2021, we will continue to adapt to the changes as they arise. 
while striving not only to meet expectations, but exceed them. We will do this through implementation of new technology and by applying lessons we learned in 2020. Now you will get to hear from the leaders of each of our units. The Open Records Unit is a single point of contact for the police department to respond to legal requests for documents in compliance with the Georgia Open Records Act. Anyone can request the majority of the documents generated by the department. And in 2020, the Open Records Unit processed over 5,800 open records requests, which is a 28% increase over 2019. These requests range from one page to thousands of pages to include body camera footage. We had to transition to remote work access in 2020, but we maintain compliance with the 72 hour response to the open records requester required by the Georgia Open Records Act, which is an oppressive accomplishment. In 2021, the unit has already another 5% increase in open records requests over 2020. Moving forward into 2021 and beyond, the Open Records Unit will strive to process open records requests more efficiently and effectively. The DeKalb Property Evidence Unit stores items of property and evidence and provides an accurate chain of custody for all items received. We provide prompt and professional service to the public, law enforcement agencies, and court personnel. At the beginning of 2020, we initiated changes for normal day-to-day -day operations. We implemented a new efficient way to limit the amount of time customers waited for assistance to retrieve personal items via structured schedule for appointments. This process is safer and improve overall customer service. We face several challenges because we currently store over 1.6 million items of evidence. This includes narcotics, firearms, and found property. Our space is extremely limited. We are working on ways to reduce a significant number of items stored. To that end, we established a liaison with the property room and the DeKalb County Sanitation Department. With this new process, we safely dispose of 1,989 pounds of marijuana in 2020. Over the past year, the property room received 19,183 items for processing to include 1,322 guns. We dispose of 5,452 items, which includes releasing 248 guns to lawful owners. Moving forward in 2021, the property room will further reduce the number of narcotics and disposable property stored in our facility. One of our primary goals in 2021 is to increase the number of disposed items by 10%. The Permits, Taxi, and Record Unit services the citizens of DeKalb County by issuing alcohol permits to employees of businesses that sell and serve alcohol, fingerprinting and processing applications for firearm carry permits, processing alcohol business license background checks, monitoring and inspecting record services, and issuing ID cards for police and for fire. Even though we had to limit service to the public in 2020, the Permits, Taxi, and Record Unit processed a total of 6,842 firearms and alcohol permit applications. This was an 11% increase over 2019 and was accomplished by closely working with probate court, established a new scheduling process, and providing excellent customer service. We worked to process the backlog of firearm permits, which was a challenge. We adjusted the hours of the staff to accommodate fingerprint applications and background checks. Our goals for 2021 are to continue working closely with probate court, effectively process all firearm applications and provide the best customer service to all citizens of the Cab County. Hi, I'm Sergeant Bernard, the peer support coordinator for police. Peer support provides assistance in mitigating the stress associated with working in emergency services. The primary function of our team is assisting individuals after a critical incident. Critical incident stress management helps first responders and others with incidents that can leave them emotionally and or physically affected. While peer support does not attempt to replace psychotherapy, it can serve as a medium to assist groups and individuals in getting the help they need, whether that ends up being a referral to a counselor, EAP, or talking with a team member. Peer support is made up of DeKalb County Emergency Services personnel, like communication officers, firefighters, and police officers, who are nominated and have attended group crisis intervention and assisting individual in crisis training. Peer support responded to several critical or traumatic incidents involving injury or death in 2020, to include assisting surrounding agencies. During 2020, we added a new member to our peer support team. They were already trained in peer support when they joined our department recently. Our goals in 2021 are to add and train six new members, 
and for our existing members to receive continued and advanced training in peer support services. And we want to continue our stress management classes for the entire department. We are exploring options on peer support mobile apps to enhance availability of our peers, make resources readily available, and to have a way to measure how peer support is helping. Are there any deficiencies? And the opportunity to get the training geared to our department's specific needs. We want to continue to educate the department on peer support and its duties. It is our sincere hope that our services will prevent officers from turning to negative or dangerous coping methods when they experience a critical incident. The police records unit processes record requests for incident, accidents, fire, and EMS reports for both the DeKalb County Police and Fire Departments. We ensure compliance with the Georgia Crime Information Center and the National Crime Information Center regulations and submit monthly crime statistic data to the state through the National Incident-Based Reporting System. In July of 2020, the Police Records Unit passed their Triennial Georgia Bureau of Investigation Audit. In June of 2020, the DeKalb County Police Records Unit was the first large metropolitan police agency in the state of Georgia to become certified to submit crime statistic data into the National Incident-Based Reporting System. We unfortunately had to close our doors to the public in 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic, which was a challenge for us. While we have missed the face-to-face -face interaction with the public, we continue to assist via mail and by phone. In 2021, we plan to continue to provide the best customer service possible and to maintain our compliance with the NIBRS program. Greetings, I am Dr. Sheila R. Grayson, and I lead the DeKalb Police Department's Personnel Services Unit. The Personnel Services Unit provides human resources, payroll benefits, including maintenance of employee files and appraisal processing, name changes and addresses, employee benefits, family medical leave processing, workers' compensation, and job postings for the police department, animal services, and E911. A challenge that we faced in 2020 involved completing our processes via remote access because some unit tasks require signatures. We were able to solve this issue by creating paths for electronic signatures and using technology. In 2020, we successfully transitioned to remote access for payroll processing and completed payroll deadlines for all DKPD, E911, and Animal Services employees. This was a challenging task as staff was not accustomed to working from home, but adapted very well. We developed a rotating work schedule to keep our staff safe and to keep all paperwork flowing. We also produced overtime reports much more efficiently for distribution to command staff as they can monitor staffing and financial concerns. In 2021, our goal is to continue to expand electronic filing of documents via technology to reduce our paper output. Because of the challenges we faced in 2020 via remote work, we realized that we need to continue to modernize our processes to become more paperless and reduce our environmental footprint. The Advanced Technology Unit provides body-worn cameras, rocket GPS systems for patrol cars, and a multitude of other technology functions for the police department. In 2020, ATU was able to improve unit efficiency and implement new and improved technologies to better equip the department. We achieved 100% deployment of body-worn cameras to all active police officers. Body-worn cameras increase our accountability and transparency to the citizens we serve. Our most important goal for the unit in 2021 will be to renew our two major contracts that expire this year. The contracts for the body-worn cameras and the contract for the LPR systems both expire this year. Also, we will upgrade our body-worn camera technology to include a sensor function that turns on the camera when an officer's gun is removed from the holster. This function will automatically begin recording during a critical incident, and we will be able to see exactly what happens, which is critical for investigations. These upgrades will ensure that interactions between officers and citizens are documented to protect both citizens and members of the department. The supply unit houses over 300,000 items of police uniform equipment, office supplies, 
cleaning supplies, and personal protection equipment for employees of the department. In 2020, the supply unit distributed over 30,000 items of much needed personal protection equipment, including over 19,000 masks, 950 boxes of surgical gloves, and over 200 gallons of hand sanitizer and other various cleaning supplies to DeKalb County employees. We faced several challenges as our vendors were sold out of PPE. Because of this, we had to find new sources to keep our inventory well stocked. We adapted well to these challenges and built new relationships with new vendors. That process continues currently as the demand grows for PPE across the nation. The supply unit also organized logistical support in ensuring that numerous police agencies within DeKalb County were able to receive over 53,000 items of PPE from DeKalb County Emergency Management Agency. Supply staff worked numerous hours to ensure that our officers had all the PPE they needed to keep them safe. Additionally, supply staff personally delivered masks, gloves, and hand sanitizer to all precincts for our officers. In 2021, the supply unit will continue to procure and supply the necessary equipment and supplies to keep the department safe. I'm Sergeant Lowe with DeKalb POW. DeKalb Police POW Plus utilizes athletics and recreational activities as well as mentoring programs to enhance trust and understanding between today's youth and officers. POW detectives were assigned to 21 DeKalb County Elementary, Middle, and High Schools in 2020 where we assisted with modifying the behaviors of students assigned to in-school suspension by providing life skill instructions and continued the mentorship of PAL mentees. The major challenge that PAL faced in 2020 was not being able to physically interact with the young people that we mentor. However, we were able to overcome those challenges with our virtual programs. We also maintain communication with our youth via phone, email, and text messages. In February 2020, we hosted our first Game with a Cop event, and there were over 30 participants. We partnered with businesses to sponsor this event, which was wildly successful. Officers played video games with the youth, and prizes were awarded to the winners. In June 2020, we held our first virtual summer academy, and it was a huge success. We were able to implement 24 different segments that included math, computer coding, police interactions, book nook, PAL fitness, basketball tips, and chat with Chief, to name a few. PAL detectives reached over 13,000 online viewers from as far away as Kuwait. At the end of the academy, we had a drive through graduation and awarded the participants with certificates and t-shirts. In August 2020, we organized a back-to-school social distancing backpack drive through giveaway where we provided 150 backpacks, USB drives, and other school supplies to the school-aged children. During the holidays, we implemented Thanksgiving and Christmas initiatives. We pro provided four families with dinners for Thanksgiving and provided a family of eight with gifts for Christmas. The families were selected with the assistance of the Cab County School Administrators and our community policing unit. Our 2021 goals are to continue to be innovative in creating PAL programs to serve the youth of DeKalb County. We have purchased new equipment to allow us to do more interactive virtual events. We are implementing a career development program in collaboration with a local college, which provides life skills, financial literacy, college preparation, appropriate business clothing and employment to all participants. PAL has forged relationship with many businesses, nonprofits and citizen partners for the creation of the career development program. In February 2021, we are partnering with the DeKalb County Entertainment Commission and DeKalb County Youth Services to host our second annual virtual online game with a cop event. The participants will be playing virtually with police officers and there will also be a forum with guest speakers to educate participants on different career paths within the gaming industry. We hope to continue forging relationships with our youth because we understand that positive interactions with law enforcement officers can be a life-changing influence on them. Thank you, and thank you for your support. And now as we start winding down, you'll be hearing about those units that report directly to my office. The DeKalb County Police Department is constantly looking for ways to maximize our personnel. Therefore, in 2020, we created two new civilian positions. The positions are Community Service Aid and Public Safety Support Assistant. 
the community service aides will respond to non-emergency calls for service, thereby allowing uniformed officers to focus on higher priority calls for service, as well as providing them with additional time for proactive patrol and community policing rather than going from call to call. They will also be able to respond to calls for service such as traffic crashes, thefts, and property damage to name a few. The second civilian position is the Public Safety Support Assistant. Public Safety Support Assistants will pr provide a variety of administrative support, customer service, and technical assistance throughout the department, thereby freeing up sworn officers to be placed into assignments that better serve the citizens of the Cab County. Hello, my name is Major Donnie James. I'm the training director for the Cab County Police Department Training Academy. Due to the 2020 pandemic, Training Academy staff develop a hybrid program of online, virtual, and in-person training courses. We employ safety measures that follow recommended guidelines from the CDC and the Department of Health throughout training. In 2020, the Training Academy successfully graduated four police academies with a total of 58 recruits and nine certified officers. We also provided required annual training to 100% of sworn officers in the department, thereby ensuring that all DKPD officers maintain their post certifications. We also successfully completed a virtual online Citizen Police Academy that graduated 50 students. In 2021, we continue to use a combination of online, in-person training for both recruit classes and certified and career officer training classes. We will also introduce more interactive training for both recruit and career officers training classes. Some of the classes that will be introduced will focus on community relations and cultural diversity. We will also facilitate a, a citizen's police academy with an expected 50 students and we're developing a citizen's youth academy for the first time in the history of the department. Our goal is to provide an above standard level of training for both the recruit classes and the career officer. We also want to work more closely with our community members by offering citizens and youth police academies. My name is Lieutenant Patterson and I am the Special Projects Coordinator with the DeKalb County Police Department. In 2020, the Police Department began conducting internal housekeeping and evaluating areas of deficient and outdated policy. Throughout the year, we identified nearly 20 policies that needed immediate revision. The three most notable policies are body-worn cameras, social media, and use of force. During the internal audit, we found that the body-worn cameras policy was a little too vague and it needed more guidance on who must wear the cameras and especially that they must be activated at all times when conducting official police business. We as a department want to provide transparency and promote healthy public relations. In keeping up with the trends in the 21st century, we know social media is here to stay and people post everything on social media. But let us not forget, Officers are people too. To maintain a professional image, the social media policy was revised to remind our officers that they, as people, are also public servants. And as such, their postings and expressions still have to remain tasteful and cannot be viewed less than professional. The revision of the use of force policy is an ongoing process. However, the immediate awareness of an officer's duty to intervene was imperative. Therefore, an immediate update was necessary to ensure that all of our officers know that they must step in and stop any instance in which another officer is using excessive force or engaging in any wrongdoing. The DeKalb County Police Department is focusing its attention on providing stellar service to our citizens and communities, and we know it begins with us. Knowing this, we are taking proactive steps to self-evaluate, educate, and improve so we can provide the best customer service possible. During 2020, the department's fleet unit has worked diligently to improve the on-time preventative maintenance that is required to maintain and maximize the vehicles in use by the police department. The department worked with the county fleet maintenance department and has seen a 51% improvement in on-time oil changes in comparison to 2019. The preventative maintenance inspections has seen an improvement of 37% during the same time period. These improvements help to extend the service life of the vehicles, ultimately reducing operational costs. The department completed an audit of the vehicles provided by the SPLOS Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax, which was voter approved in 2017, 
The audit found that the department had no errors. For 2021, the goal of the department fleet unit is to continue making improvements to the timeliness of the required preventative maintenance and to upfit the replacement vehicles in a timely manner. The Planning and Research Grants Unit acquires federal, state, and local grant funding to fill budgetary gaps and help support law enforcement and public safety activities. The police department uses grant money for training, to fund special projects, and assist in acquiring equipment to combat crime. The grants unit is responsible for securing and managing grants. From new demands imposed by COVID-19 to innovative technology, additional funding provided by grants helps to sustain the police department's tenacity to fight crime while protecting DeKalb County citizens and visitors. Hi, I'm Captain Anthony Ford, the commander of the DeKalb County Police Department's Internal Affairs Unit. The Internal Affairs Unit handles complaints of misconduct against DeKalb County Police Department personnel. Of course, everyone is aware of the negative connotations associated with an Internal Affairs Unit. But what we strive to do is help officers understand that we're here to serve and protect them as much as we're here to serve and protect the public. The vast majority of DeKalb County police officers are good and honorable men and women who have given themselves to a life of service. Those men and women deserve to know that when they put on a DeKalb County uniform, they are part of an agency that demands the highest level of professionalism and does not tolerate actions that aren't consistent with the values of courtesy, honor, and justice. Something that our internal affairs unit does that may not be common knowledge is that we review every single use of force report generated by our agency. No officer likes to use force, and in a perfect world, we wouldn't have to. But on those unfortunate occasions where force is needed to achieve a legitimate police objective, we serve as an extra layer of scrutiny to make sure that our actions are consistent with our values. Another aspect of our duties that might not be common knowledge is that we are in charge of the department's early warning system. This is a proactive monitoring system that alerts us when an officer might need additional training or mentoring to aid them in upholding our standards. There are set criteria that trigger an early warning system notification. Last year, the Internal Affairs Unit received 238 complaints. Every single complaint received by the Internal Affairs Unit is evaluated by Internal Affairs Command. Less serious allegations are assigned to the officer's immediate supervisors to investigate. These might be complaints such as citizens who believe they unfairly received a traffic ticket or that an officer was discourteous when handling a call. Allegations of a more serious nature receive a thorough investigation by our unit. In 2020, there were 75 cases that received a full investigation. Our goals in IA remain pretty consistent. We wish to investigate every complaint thoroughly, fairly, and expeditiously. In 2020, we transitioned to an all-supervisor unit to assist us with this goal. What this means is that every member of the Internal Affairs Unit holds the rank of sergeant or higher. This ensures that we have the most experienced investigators handling the important work that we do. So hopefully you don't need us, but if you do, our contact information can be found below. I am Sergeant Melinda Henderson Wynn, and I am the Accreditation Certification Manager. Accreditation and certification signify that an agency has met specific standards of excellence in its policies, procedures, and operations. Our agency first received accreditation from the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies, also known as CALEA, in 1992, and certification from the state of Georgia in 2000. In 2020, our department was examined by both credentialing agencies. We received outstanding reviews and were awarded reaccreditation and recertification. The department is reviewed every three years by the state and every four years by CALEA. The DeKalb County Police Department also received certification from the Georgia Association of Chiefs of Police as a law enforcement agency that meets the standards on safe policing for safe communities established by the United States Department of Justice. To achieve this status, a law enforcement agency must follow safe policing principles within its policies and procedures to include use of force and de-escalation techniques, performance management tools, and community engagement. This certification is effective for three years. 
The departmental goals for 2021 are to successfully manage the preparation for the state and CALEA assessment reviews and ensure the department will meet the requirements of the standards for law enforcement agencies. Greetings to the wonderful citizens of DeKalb County. I'm Detective Keith Lee with the DeKalb County Background and Recruiting Unit. We're the unit that's responsible for hiring the great men and women who honorably serve our DeKalb County citizens. Just like the rest of the nation, we were challenged with the pandemic, but our role in the hiring process is too important for us to just stop or quit. We had to find a way to make our process successful and continue with the hiring. We imparted flexibility in our recruiting and hiring process by taking our process that up until this point had been 100% face-to-face and now it is actually 90% virtual. And it works. It allows our applicants to navigate through the hiring stages with flexibility, convenience, and more importantly, the ability to feel safe. We amped up our social media recruiting by adjusting from an on-site recruiting events to utilizing more online platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and more virtual job fairs. Though 2020 brought about a lot of challenges, I am proud and pleased to say that we still were able to hire 83 great honorable officers to serve the citizens of DeKalb County. And we're rolling into 2021 with the same steam and we're looking forward to do bigger and better things. We'll be going harder on social media, our virtual job fairs, and we'll be getting our brand out by utilizing billboards, geofacing, and other digital media platforms. So we are looking forward to 2021. This is gonna be a great year for us and a great year for the citizens of the DeKalb County. Hi, I'm Akella Vincent. And I'm Officer Elise Wells. And we are the Public Information Office. Where media meets policing. If you've seen DKPD on TV or read about us in the paper, then the information probably came from me. And if you saw DKPD on social media, then it probably came from me. Not even a pandemic could slow this office down in 2020. That's right. In 2020, our goals were to utilize social media to increase transparency and to improve our overall community engagement. And with 1 million impressions for the year, we did just that. We sure did. And as the media spokesperson for the department, we responded to hundreds of local, national, and international media requests. From press conferences to town halls, this office has done it all in 2020. In 2021, as we have more things planned, we can only go up from here. That's right. So stay tuned, DeKalb County. So now that you've learned more than you ever thought possible about DKPD, we're going to go ahead and answer some of the questions that were submitted on our Facebook page. Um, we're going to start with Major Mears. What measures are you doing to keep crime down? We're currently putting an emphasis on identifying our violent repeat offenders that prey on our community. And once we've identified them, ourselves and our federal partners are trying to persuade the courts to give us an enhanced sentence so we can keep them off the streets longer, so they can't victimize our community anymore. Um, we found that it's very effective if you can keep them off the streets uh, longer, then we can keep the streets safer and less crime. So. Thank you. Um, Assistant Chief Ivanov, I have another question I think you can answer, and it's trying to deal with street racers and drifters, specifically in Tucker. Thanks, but it definitely applies to Tucker. Um, in early 2020, um, we formed Operation Deny the Drift, and it's really a collection of department leads to help us plan and shape our responses and ensure the department's uh, leads come together and we're acting as a unified front and really communicating internally. And one of those key roles you kind of already heard about in the CID side when Lieutenant Donahue um, and it's, it's an effort to get the real-time intelligence that we need to stay ahead of where they're going to be. And the hope is to have our enforcement units uh, at locations and along the route that they would take to get there um, to really kind of break the group apart before they have a chance to form. Uh, we found that really to be the key component of this, is getting our resources at locations ahead of it 
And we're also planning to meet with some of the key organizers at their homes, not during the time they're racing, but prior to the racing and discourage them um, and share that we're gonna be aggressive in our enforcement of it. So, um, and we're also working with community prosecutors in the court system just to make sure that we're all on the same page once we get folks, um, that we really send a strong message to them just how important it is to us and our community to keep our roadways safe. So that's a great question. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. So the next few questions are gonna be for Assistant Chief Patrick. And one of the questions is, does Tucker have a parking lot area for safe selling? To sell items safely, if not, what do you recommend? Yes, all of our precincts are available to use for safe selling. Tucker Precinct is located on Lansdale Highway near the Walmart. So uh, that's an area where it can be uh, conducted, safe selling can be conducted, but you can use any of our precincts, including the police and police. Why aren't there SWAT cameras used in Lithonia? We do have cameras being used in Lithonia. We have them in the Stonecrest area as well. Uh, it's part of our shared responsibility and our public-private partnership, uh, coordinated with Connect the Cab. As Connect the Cab grows, we hope to grow more cameras in the Lithonia area as well. Okay, what area is the bike patrol assigned to? I haven't seen them in Lithonia. We conduct bike patrol operations throughout the county. Uh, it's a new program that we've just started and produced. So uh, we operate throughout the county. Obviously during the winter months, it's uh, less likely that you'll see bike patrol, but in the spring and summer months, we hope to incorporate more bike patrol throughout the county wide. Okay, what are the plans to reduce the noise violations in Lithonia? Noise violations has been an issue throughout DeKalb County, not just in Lithonia. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've been working with the DeKalb County Law Department and the Board of Commissioners to institute a new noise ordinance uh, to address noise issues without having to use sound meters to do so. Uh, that policy is in the Law Department and with the Board of Commissioners, and hopefully that ordinance will be passed soon and will make it more enforceable to address noise ordinance issues. Okay, another question. Can you please advise on getting speedy devices to detect tag numbers and issuing fines to reckless speeders along Flat Shoals Parkway? Yes, we have deployed multiple different efforts in addressing speeding throughout the DeKalb County. Uh, we have officers that are certified laser detection officers um, they are deployed on Flat Shoals Parkway among many of the roads in DeKalb County. There are certain areas that the law does not permit the use of laser devices, and we have to be cognizant of those areas and those laws that we do not violate the law ourselves. So there are two more questions left before we close, and I'll take them. One is going to be, are ride-along suspended because of COVID? And the answer to that is yes. We have suspended ride-alongs. We're anxiously waiting to restart them, but we need to make sure that we keep the community and the officers safe so we don't want to put two people in a car if we don't absolutely have to. So we hope to bring those back as soon as COVID gets better. And the last question is, why does it take an act of Congress to contact Chief Ramos? And I don't believe it takes an act of Congress. I have my email and my phone number posted on our website. It's also posted uh, on our Facebook page. We are gonna post that information now as well. The one thing that we do pride ourselves is being uh, very responsive and accessible. Uh, so my email, dkpdchief at thecapcountygeorgia.gov and my phone number are on my website. And I believe that if you send me an email or make a phone call, I will definitely get right back to you. Since we're coming to a close, I'm gonna to wanna to share my goal for 2021, which is gonna to be to continue listening to the voices of our employees and our citizens alike, so that we can continue to work together to make the Cap County a safer place. Together we can, and we will make a difference. So I wanna say thank you to the men and the women of the DeKalb County Police Department, as without them, what we do would not be possible. A special thank you to the audience, our DeKalb County citizens and the DeKalb County administration for supporting us at a time when it makes all the difference. Thank you for spending this time with us. Please follow us on social life. media. Have a good night as we close with some reasons as to why we serve. I want to help improve the quality of life here in DeKalb County.
My father was a police officer. I love the teamwork. Secure communities make successful futures possible. Every day is an opportunity to help someone. It's an ability for me to give back. I wanted to serve my community. I want to be a role model for future generations. Para que la comunidad se sienta segura. The Cat County is where I belong. I come from a family of first responders. I wanted to have a positive impact on kids that grew up the same way that I did. Because my basketball coach and my mentors were police officers and they inspired me. To be the change I want to see. Because my grandfather served. Because I'm passionate about my job. There are people who look like me and don't have a voice.